Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Sunny and today I am going to discuss the problem Global and Local Inversions Index number 775 and the problem is of medium type of lead code. Okay, so let's uh, jump over to the problem statement. We have been given some permutation of A uh, that is permutation which is going to start from 0 up to n minus 1 and the length of the permutation would be capital N. Okay. And the global inversions is defined as number of indices i and j which satisfy the condition that is i should be strictly less than j and uh, both are both should be less than and and greater than equal to 0 and ai should be greater than aj that is strictly greater than aj and this is the definition of global inversions that is the number of pair i comma g such that i should be strictly less than j and ai should be strictly greater than aj now comes the local inversions and what is the definition of the local inversions it is the number of pair i which satisfies the condition that is consecutive numbers of the array satisfy the relation ai should be greater than ai plus 1 okay now we have to return true if and only if the number of global inversions is equal to the number of local inversions okay now, if you are not going to understand still what is the number of what is the global inversions definition or the local inversions definition, uh, let me make let me make clear with the help of example. For now, let's move further. I am going to explain with the help of example later on in this video. So no need to worry about. Now let's head over to the constraints to analyze the problem in detail. That is, the length should be like uh, capital N and it is going to at most 5000. Okay, so we can have an O of n square solution or it will give a TLA because it will be like 25 into 10 power 6 and since the time limit of this problem has been reduced it will be, it will give TLA so we must think of n log n solution or O of n solution okay now let's head over to the example uh, to understand this problem in detail and let's discuss the various approaches of this problem also okay so let's move further okay you can easily see this is the six uh, arrays that I have taken over there to afford the example so before moving to this let us understand for what is the global inversions and what is the local inversions so you can easily see for a global inversions like we have an array like this let's say so if uh, uh, it is starting from 0 1 2 3 then we have to report the number of pairs i comma g which satisfy the condition such that i should be less than j and uh, ai should be strictly greater than aj Okay, we have to, this is the definition of global inversions. So in this case, you can see, let's say this is 102, then you can easily see 1 is greater than 0 and uh, indices also satisfy i less than j and this is a global inversion, the count would be incremented by 1 and for the case 0, you can see there are no more elements to the right of it which are strictly less than 0. So in this case, number of global inversions will come out to be 1 and the pair corresponding to that is 1 comma 0. Okay, and let's talk about local inversions. You can see local inversions is basically number of indices i such that i and i plus 1 should be valid and ai should be strictly greater than a of i plus 1. Okay, this is the definition of local inversions. In this you can see 1 and 0 satisfy these conditions. The local inversions will be 1 and the pair corresponding to that is 1 comma 0. Okay. So this is the definition of local and global inversions. Okay. Now one thing uh, before moving further, I need to make clear that uh, local inversions are basically the subset of global inversions. And why the local inversions is going to be the subset of global inversions? So this is going to be an important task to understand that. So let's head over to that and understand why local inversions is going to be a subset of global inversions. Okay. For that we need to have uh, something more. Uh, cooler approach that is with the help of example I'm, I'm going to explain that okay so let's suppose we have the array elements as 2 0 1 now it is easy. you can easily see n is here 3 and the elements must lie that is it is a permutation that is 0 1 2 the permutation of 0 1 2 should be the elements of the array okay now you can see in this case what is the according to the definition of local inversions we need to find the number of indices i such that which satisfy ai should be greater than ai plus 1 you can, uh, so whether this will be a valid index i for local inversions no this should be a valid index i for the local inverse no 
because you can see if a i is this a i plus 1 is this and it is not satisfying that a i should be greater than a i plus 1 for local inversion, but it is not satisfying that. So, you can see in this case number of uh, number of local inversions is coming out to be 0. Okay, now let us check that what should the number of global inversions. You can see for the global inversions i should be less than j and a i should be greater than a j. This will increment the if there is a valid index j which satisfies this condition and i then our global inversions will be incremented by 1. Now you can see this j can go up to that is j can go up to i plus 1 to n that is uh, in the case of local inversion j only goes to i plus 1 but in this case j is going to from i plus 1 to uh, the end of the array it means that we can have uh, it means that we can have a subset that is uh, for local inversions we, this local inversion must be a subset of this global inversions because for global inversions it is taking the values of j starting from i plus 1 you can easily see starting from i plus 1 to n that is to the end of the array. But in case of local inversions it stops at the i plus 1. You can easily see in this case also if I am fixing my i as this one my j uh, for in case of counting global inversions my j can go from this to this. Okay, but in case of uh, you can see the local inversions my j stops at this point. So, you can see that is why I am getting 0 as the number of local inversions. But we, if we count the number of global inversions you can easily see my this 2 should be greater than 1 that is 2 is this element and 1 is this element and index if we correspond to that 0 should be less than 2. Yes, it is a valid global inversion pair. So, in this case number of global inversions coming out to be 1 but the number of local inversions coming out to be 0. Okay. So, that is the definition that is local inversions should be always should be a subset of global inversions. This is going to be an important task to, to solve this problem efficiently. Okay. Now, he, let us head over to the approaches to solve this problem efficiently. Okay. Okay, so, let me erase this stuff. So, this is really very annoying. Okay. Now, you can see. Uh, okay, so, uh, let us talk about O of n square solution. O of n square solution will not pass, but for conveniency, let us have an O of n square solution that is for i start from, uh, start from i and to the end of the array, 1 from the end of the array and for every i, let us iterate j from i plus 1 up to the end of the array and check the pair. If you, what is the number of global inversions and what is the number of local inversions. Okay? And uh, if uh, they are not equal, just return false. If they are equal, return true. So, th this is the global in oh, this is the O of n square solution approach. Now, let us talk about O of n log n solution. In case of O of n log n solution, what I am going to do is uh, basically uh, we can easily find the number of local inversions in O of n time because we need to check only the consecutive indices. And what about number of global inversions? In case of global inversions count, we need to have an O of n log n solution. And what how we are going to do that? Uh, okay, so let's talk about some better approach. You can have a very very well known merge sort technique. In case of merge sort technique, you can easily see uh, for finding the total number of inversions in the merge operation of the function, it is our answer would be incremented by mid minus i for every iteration for every uh, merge operation. You can have a mid minus i number of inversions. So, if you are not aware, aware about this technique, I am going to provide that in my description section of the video. So, do check that for counting the number of inversions, number of global inversions using merge sort technique. Okay, this is the very first method. This will give us the O of n log n time complexity to have a number of inversions, global inversions. So, this is the very first method. And let us talk about the second method to have an O of n log n solution for counting the number of global inversions. You can see. I have another uh, method called Fenwick tree. So, Fenwick tree is basically putting the elements from the end of the array and calculating what are the number of elements that are going to be strictly less than the current element. Basically, you can see i should be less than j and a i should be greater than a j. Now, you can easily see if we start from the end of the array and put the elements in the Fenwick tree, I need to calculate 
or a particular index i, what are the number of elements to the right of the current index that are going to be strictly less than the current element, okay. So, uh, I am going to use Fenwick tree to calculate what are the number of elements that are going to be strictly less than the current element and if we start from the right hand side, the index is always going to be satisfying this condition. That is why I am going to move from the right hand side of the array. And this was the second method. If you are not going to aware of this, I am also going to provide the Fenwick tree description and this Fenwick tree tutorial in the description section of the video. Also, I am going to provide the Fenwick tree solution also. Okay, and here I have a third approach of O of n log n solution. And what is the third approach? You can use an ordered set in C++. Uh, ordered set in C++ also calculates number of elements that are going to be strictly less than a particular element in n in log of log of n time complexity. Okay, and for every element uh, starting from i equal to one to n, I should have a O of n log n time complexity. So, ordered set in C++ is basically just finding out the number of elements that are going to be strictly less than the particular element and also in this case I am going to write it from the end of the array to find out the number of global inversions and in case of number of local inversions it is it will be always of O of n time complexity. So, this is the O of n log n solution and let us talk about O of n solution. Okay, Now, this is going to be a very much important because so, a uh, solution with a uh, less time complexity O of n must be favored in any of the interviews. Okay. Now, you can see uh, let us talk about this example 2, 0 and 1. Now, in case of local inversions you can see a i should be greater than a i plus 1. Okay. Now, this is the definition of local inversions and in case of uh, global inversions a i should be greater than a of, a of j and a j can vary to the right hand side of the i any that is i plus 1 to n. Now, you can see uh, in case of uh, that is uh, for global inversions you can see if a i if a i should be greater than a i plus 1 then global inversion count would be incremented by 1 g plus equal to 1 and local inversion count will also be incremented by 1 obviously because a of i should be uh, local inversion count is a subset of global inversion count and if this condition satisfied then global inversion count and local inversion count should be incremented by 1. Now comes the major role if if that is for if i plus 2 for if i am at current index i and if for i plus 2 you can easily see uh, if this local inversion is not valid we cannot check for i and i plus 2 for in case of local inversions, but we can check for i and i plus 2 for global inversions. That is if a of i is, uh, is greater than a of i plus 2, it means that uh, this uh, index i and this index i plus 2 is going to contribute in global inversions. But if this is going to contribute in global inversions, it means that uh, uh, local inversions count will not be incremented by 1 and global inversion count will be incremented by 1. So, if this is going to happen, it means that global inversion count will never be going to be equal to local inversion count. Also, local inversion count is a subset of global inversion count. We need to take care of that if a of i should be greater than a of i plus 2, it means that uh, the number of global inversion count will be incremented by 1 and still local inversion count will remain the same. So, uh, so for a current element i that is at i at index maintain a ma prefix maximum uh, value of the array elements and if at any index i if a i should be greater than a i plus 2 we can claim easily that our answer cannot be possible. Okay, That is because global inversion count will be incremented by 1 but local inversion count should not be should not be incremented by 1 and if this happens I can easily say local inversion count will never be equal to global inversion count our answer should be false in this case. Okay. So, let us head over to the code to find the best solution and efficient solution related to this problem. Okay. So, let us move further. Okay. So, here is the code of uh, having the O of n time complexity you can see that. Now, basically as I have already said we are going to check current maximum if my current maximum at any, at any particular index i is going to be greater than the element present at next to next index of my current index and if it is true then it is basically signifying that the it is going to contribute to the global inversion but it does not contribute to local inversion 
so uh, this basically states that our answer cannot be possible because we can easily understand that uh, local uh, inversion count is going to be subset of global inversion count and if global inversion count is going to increase and my local inversion count is, is going to remain constant then our answer cannot be possible so just iterate up to length less than n minus 2 that is starting with 0 and find out the current maximum and if my current maximum is going to be strictly greater than uh, the element present at next to next index return false otherwise return true okay so let's submit this code and check it out if this is going to work fine or not okay yes it is good now moving further to the next o of n log n solution time complexity so let us copy let me copy this code of penwick tree that i've already written over here and i'm going to explain it now okay so you can see uh, starting with the actual ideal permutation function you can see i have uh, i have a variable local and i have a variable global you can see get uh, get local inversion is going to get the local inversion count and get global inversion is going to have a get uh, global inversion count okay and uh, let's uh, move the function move to the get local inversion function just iterate up to less than and check the consecutive elements if ai is going to be less than strictly less than a of i minus 1 just increment our count which is going to denote uh, local inversion count okay now you can see i have a get global inversion count it is going to basically count total number of global inversions in my actual array and which is basically number of indices pair of indices i and j which is going to satisfy the relation i should be strictly less than j and a of i should be strictly greater than a of j you can see i am going to use a pen victory uh, which is basically i am going to use an array to implement the pen victory bit dot assign the maximum value which is going to be like 5000 so just i have for simplicity i am going to take 5005 size and just iterate from back side of the array because i need to find the number of elements i less than j and a of i should be greater than a of j so so i need to find number of elements greater than the particular element at a particular index to the right of it that's why i'm going to iterate from the back side of the array and just i'm going to increment my a of i by one so this is going to be very much important because my implementation of the fenwick to you are going to when you are going to find this code you can see this is for uh, uh, one based indexing so my array elements are going to start with zero that's why i'm going to increment my array element by one otherwise i may get time limit exceeded verdict okay so i'm going to use a basically one based indexing fenwick tree implementation approach that's why i'm going to increment my a of i if you are going to use a one zero based index uh, zero based indexing fenwick tree approach then you're not going to implement this a of i by one just do as it is so uh, here now i'm going to use a one based indexing that's why i'm going to increment my a of i by one and just to get the answer by a of i minus one because i need to find number of elements which are going to be strictly less than my current element that's why i performed a of i minus one get the answer by a of i minus one that is i'm going to you call a function get of the fenwick tree implementation okay and i have also have add function that is going to add the value one in my fenwick tree and here i have add function and get function okay so if you are not aware of the fenwick tree and the and its implementation no need to worry about i'm going to provide that uh, link to the to the tutorial of fenwick tree in my description section of the video for now so let's submit this code and check it out if it is going to work fine or not okay good so if you have any doubts do not forget to mention in the comment section of the video and i will ask the viewers to like this video share this video and do subscribe to youtube channel for latest updates thank you for watching this video